Okay. Yay. Okay. I think it's happening. Awesome. Cool. Yay. Hi. Hello. Um, okay. So I'm just making sure I can see everything at once because there's like a lot happening on the, on the back end of this thing. Um, so I just want to make sure. Ooh, I can pop the chat out. Whoa, you guys are going crazy. Hold on. Let's do this. Yeah, that's so much better. Okay. All right. Let me fix one more thing. Oh, it's happening right now. Okay, here, hold on. Um, I changed the description. I can do that live. It's crazy. Okay. All right, guys. Hi. All right, so I just did the Facebook one of this earlier today, and now I'm doing the YouTube, and it's very... I'm not a tech person, so this is astounding that the internet has not exploded. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of you. Uh, Venezuela, England, Portugal, Sweden, eating a banana. Awesome. <laughs> Glad you're eating a banana. Israel, Netherlands, Dublin. Woo, I was there. Germany, Deutschland, Serbia, watermelon. All right. I don't want to spend, <laughs> I'm not going to spend the whole Q&A talking about that. Um... Wow, this is very fast. <laughs> Florida. I'm sorry you live in Florida, Alex. It's not a very fun place. Korea and France. All right, so hi, guys. Um, I don't know if any of you guys were there for the uh, Facebook Q&A, but I did that earlier today, and that video is there now if you ever want to go back and watch it. This one will also be available uh, when, when it's done. You can probably hear my computer fan. It is having a rough time. So, um, I wanted to just answer any questions you guys have. I mean, it could be about the big Ireland speech or really uh, anything you want to ask me. Um, and I can do it live. So, I think your comments are pretty live. I can see those in real time. Uh, but you'll hear me respond to them a little bit later because there's a bit of a delay on the actual video as to when it gets to you. So, just, just FYI. Um, okay, so, does anyone have a question they want to ask? Am I fasting today? Oh, no, for World Farm Animal, Farmed Animals Day? Um, I'm not fasting, but I, I do have my Toronto Chicken Save t-shirt on, which I guess you guys can't really even see, but that's just because, I mean, there's no way to really rank cruelty or rank any of those kind of things, but... Like I said in the Ireland speech, by sheer numbers, chickens are the most exploited of the farmed land animals. If we get into the non-land fish, I mean 2.8 trillion a year, it's crazy. So definitely doing that. Um, okay, so let me see questions. More comments below. Okay. Um... Why did you get the tattoos and are they vegan? Phil? Philly? Philly? Philly Prado? I have videos on that. You should Google it. Not Google it. Go to the channel. Tattoos. No, also on my, on my website. But I do have a, I have a bunch of them. I have a tattoo tour that's pretty old. I go through my tattoos. I have one where I take you for my calf tattoo. I have one on a vegan guide to tattoos. Like how to get a vegan tattoo. Um, and I have a new one coming up where I interviewed a vegan tattoo artist here, where I live now, who did uh, this, which is new. So they are vegan. You can get vegan tattoos. And the video is kind of laid out. It's pretty easy. A lot of the inks tend are already vegan these days anyway, by mistake. So there's some things to watch out for. But yes, they are all vegan. Um, and I got them because they mean things to me. <laughs> Uh, there, I talk about all of them in that video, except for obviously the ones that were after that video, which is just the one that I did in the next video. And then this one, which I will be doing soon. Um, okay. So, wow, this is very fast. Um, if I miss you guys, I'm very sorry. Uh, okay. So theater trio, it's been my dream to study abroad for a while and the rotary hasn't been able to find a family willing to do vegan, but we found a family willing to do vegetarian for a year. What do I do? Well, I guess you can make your own food. Honestly, that's probably the easiest thing. And if they're willing to do vegetarian, then you can just eat whatever they eat that's vegan or whatever they make that's vegan and then 
make the rest of it yourself. I mean, I lived and studied in India twice. I was in India, and I also um, have I've lived and studied in other countries as well. And I actually just made my own food the second time I went. Made it a little bit easier. Um, okay, so, woo, try to get to, to some more. Um, Tosa Cat, I'm going to pronounce these the best I can. They're YouTube usernames sometimes, so who knows. Uh, what are your views on vegan protein powder? I think it depends on if you want it, if you want to use it or not. I think for most people it's not necessary. If you want to have some extra protein, do it. As long as it's vegan, you know. As far as, like, the health impact of it, you know, I think it depends on the, the different kinds, what they're made of, how pure they are, because there can be heavy metal issues. Um, okay, so, and Moa Matilda, I love you too. All of you guys with the little emojis. Have you been surprised by, recently, by something that's not vegan? That's Miss Manos. Not really. I mean, I don't know if I really get surprised that much anymore because there's just so much that's not vegan. <laughs> it's almost surprising these days when, when, when there's not animals shoved into something because we tend to do that. Um, so let's see. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of questions. Um, Eliana Posada, how do you deal with frustration when after talking to somebody about veganism, they just don't care? Uh, I talked about this a little bit earlier today. The Basically, I mean, it is frustrating. Uh, I just try to, uh, my time is very limited. All of our time is very limited. And so I try to just then focus on trying to reach the people who will listen. Because I think at least it's my tendency to really want to just get that one person who is not going to listen to just totally listen to me. And I could be using that time much more effectively to reach other people. So I just try to then focus my attention on that moving forward. What can I do next to be effective? Okay. Um, will you ever come to Israel? I'd love to meet you. Yes, I would love to. I'd love to go everywhere. I'll go, you know, when, if it's feasible, if I can make it work, I'll go anywhere. Talk about veganism. Anywhere. Happy to do it. Um, the Frog Queen. I did a video where I interviewed a chicken farmer at the farm. Big, scary warehouse. How can I do more activism? That's awesome, number one. That's pretty cool to, to talk to them about that. Going into, like, the actual industry is incredibly valuable you know, and showing what is actually happening and talking and talking to the people in the industry. I mean, these are the people, you know, that, that, I mean, it's like trying to reach people who, who aren't vegan is kind of, kind of the thing to do. So for the frog queen doing more activism, I mean, there's so many different ways to, to be active. I mean, you can continue doing what you're doing. You can do different interviews with, with people in the industry. Like, you know, maybe you want to, even do things where you're kind of going in undercover. I don't know if that's if that's kind of up your alley. That's it's a bit more of a sensitive area to do, especially depending on where you live in America. Be careful. Um, but you know, for some people, it's doing education. It's doing videos. For some people, it's getting out there in uh, in the save movement is is one that I you know is very close to my heart. Going to vigils, starting vigils, Toronto Pig Save. Um, all of the, the whole save movement, it's everywhere. That's just, I mean, that's an example to get off track slightly for a second of, if you think that you're one person and you can't do anything, uh, Anita Kreins and, uh, and Mr. Beans, the Beagle started Toronto pig save one day, seeing pigs in a truck. And now it is all over the world. I was just, you know, at Manchester pig save, Essex pig save. It's all over. So just getting out and doing something, finding what it is you're passionate about and, and, and pursuing that. Um, okay, I'll keep going. It's getting really... I did this on Facebook. I talked very long on each question. Uh, menstrual reusable pads from Joanne Vegan for Compassion. Uh, there's a number of them. I have actually a video called Are Tampons Vegan? And in that, on the blog post, are a list of different 
products you can get or different, you know, reusables. There's um, Glad Rags is, is one that I just have off the top of my head. Um, I like those. They, they do like a snap. They have like a, they're cotton, but they have a snap and they have like an organic cotton unbleached version. So check out that blog post. Um, Mara, what do you think about vegetarians? I actually have a whole video. I have a couple videos on that. Well, in every video that's about dairy or eggs. But I have a really old one called Vegan versus Vegetarian and um, a couple others that are on point with that. And I can't think of them right now. But, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I think sometimes vegetarians can be almost more challenging than non-vegans because a lot of times it's like when, when we're in that mentality, it's like, well, I'm already I'm doing what I need to do for the animals and I'm, and I'm you know, I'm not eating them. And, and so, so sometimes it can be even a little bit harder to, to kind of get through that than it's someone who just has no, uh, preconceptions about, you know, avoiding any animal products at all. Uh, it's kind of the same, you know, it's like that same blind spot of, you know, the dairy to dairy and eggs that uh, we once had to meet. And it's just kind of, again, getting, getting over that. Some people do move through vegetarianism, um, but, and again, it's really not ideal to rank cruelty. It's not something I like to do. Um, but if we just kind of look at like the length and duration and nature of suffering, dairy and eggs are pretty horrific, you know. And I say in my vegan versus vegetarian video, which is something that gets misinterpreted all the time, I say something like it's worse than meat. What I mean by that is not that eating meat is great, you know, or meat eaters who also eat eggs and dairy are doing less damage than vegetarians. I don't, it gets misinterpreted. What that means though is that, you know, with dairy and eggs, you also have the long periods of imprisonment. Well, not long, still abbreviated lifetimes, but the imprisonment, the ongoing sexual exploitation, with eggs, you have the males being thrown into the grinders, all of these things. And the mothers of dairy are being, you know, repeatedly forcefully impregnated and so basically raped, which we don't like to use that term for cows if we were in her place. But that's what we would call it. And then having her child taken away time and time again, you know. So it's just those, those two industries are just rife with suffering. And then they have the same end result that the meat industry does where they're slaughtered, you know, it's just like this more prolonged suffering ahead of time. And also, you know, veal, the veal industry, it's because of dairy, it's a dairy byproduct per se. So, so it's really, it's not, um, it's not, I would never tell anyone, yeah, just get to vegetarian and hang out for a while. But it's also, you know, more people to reach. That's why veg fests are still very valuable. Even if maybe even if the whole audience is vegetarian already, there's still a lot to uh, to be reached there, and I and I still think there's it's good to kind of approach it in the same way that you are when you're approaching and helping people learn about veganism. Um, okay, my goodness, I'm gonna get I'm gonna try to be faster, you guys. Um, the Scott Channel, I do take steroids. Thank you. They're doing wonders for my health. Um, Someone's going to take that and make, like, a little GIF video and be like, she admitted it. That was sarcasm. Anyways. Okay. Um, oh, my goodness. Will I be doing more Draw My Life videos? This is Lila Mittens. I like that name. Yes, I would really like to do more Draw My Life videos. I There's so many videos I want to do more of. I really want to get back into the history of veganism. That one is really, I really love that. I want to do more kids videos. I mean, I have so many different series and videos and I have like a, a document of like hundreds and hundreds of video topics. It's just being one person is very unfortunate. I would love to be able to do more, you know. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. There is just so much happening here. It's like every once in a while it, it jumps and it like kicks it. A bunch of y'all's comments like up really high so and then I'm trying to figure out where I was so I, I know I'm not gonna be able to get to everybody I'm gonna do my best um, oh my goodness there's a lot happening here <laughs> okay I'm gonna find 
Nope, I'm back up to the beginning. Oh. Can you expand your content in different languages? If you can get translators, I'd love to translate. Sh um, Shane? Sean? V? I have that. If you go into the bottom of any of my, any of my videos, very bottom of the description, there's something called the translation team document. Go there. You can add captions to any of my videos. I, a lot of them are already translated into other languages. And now YouTube enables it that I can have translated titles and descriptions. So you add those to the document and then we put them in the back end. So a lot of my videos already will come up in other languages, even in the search. And always check the captions. There's probably multiple languages. So I can always use more volunteers to add more languages because that makes it that much more accessible to other people. So if you just check the description, bottom of the description, any video, you'll find the link to the document. You can come on in, join the team. It'll be great. And it's such a valuable thing to be able to have this go out in different languages and reach other people. You know, and I'm going to, I'm hopefully going to try to find a better way to organize it because the document is getting very, very long. But, um, yes, please join the, the translation team. I could always use more people. Also, if anyone wants to caption this live video in English, even after it's done, because it's not something I'm scripting, that would be very valuable because then other people can translate it. Same with the Facebook one. Okay. Mm, let's see. There's a lot. Oh my goodness, there's so many things. I would love to come to Sweden. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm going to try to pronounce someone's name here. Um, Hold on. What is it? Tom Langbeek? Probably wrong, sir. I apologize. Um, oh, Liebe aus Deutschland. Thank you, Milan. The Ireland speech was incredibly impactful. Do you get a lot of similar reactions from the people who are at your seminars? Thanks so much. This is from Phantasm. Um, I'm just going to make sure. Hold on one second. I'm just pulling this up to make sure that everything's going okay. All right. So um, this is talking about the Ireland speech was very impactful. And the emotion after the video you showed them was moving. Do you get a lot of similar reactions from people who are at your seminars? Yeah, actually I do. Like, I mean, especially after the, the footage portion of the talks, there is a vis visible reaction from most of the people in the room. And I mean, that's why, that's part of why I use it. And I, you know, I use, or I try to always use uh, graphic footage in a very calculated manner or a very like purposeful manner. I, I don't just throw it out there for no reason and accepting the first, you know, couple of videos I ever made, I always have ample warning as well. So there's, a, there's great value to using graphic undercover footage, especially because we work so hard as a society to hide that away. I mean, it's even in the United States, you could be a terrorist for even filming what is happening. I mean, that's how intensely we are trying to hide this. So it's important to show what is happening to these animals and they deserve to have someone witness, you know, they deserve to have light shed on this. And so I always see it for me personally, as if they have to live through it, if they have to die by it, the very least I can do is bear witness. So, I mean, that's kind of the whole foundation of the, the save movement as well. So yes, there is usually this, a pretty profound reaction from people. Um, okay, so there's one, uh, what are your tips on spending holidays with vegan or with non-vegan friends and family? And I can't find the, I can't find the name. I'm so sorry. I'll find your name, hopefully. Um, so the, I actually have, as I, as I always say, I actually have a video on that, on spending uh, time with friends and family, non-vegan friends and family. And uh, I think it's called How to Survive the, the Holidays with, as non, with non-vegans or something like that. Um, but with that, it really depends on if you are going to decide to eat with them or not. And for some people, it's just, they just choose to just not even go there. Um, and so in the video that I'm, I'm refer, referring to, it, um, it's, it's more for like, if you actually decide, yes, I'm going to eat with these people. Um, um, oh, Hannikins. 
is the one who asked this. Thank you, Hannah. Kins. Um, and, and so with, if you're going to eat with them, a good, I think I go through the video about, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do. Like, you know, number one, be prepared. You can set your boundaries. You can also eat before. If you feel like you're afraid you're going to be without food, you can bring your own stuff and bring enough to share because that way you're also like introducing them to fun vegan options. So there's a lot of ways to, to navigate it. Uh, you can also just kind of decide for yourself. I'm not going to eat with people who aren't eating vegan. And I know that's how Gary Yarofsky does it. And it's funny because then people have this reaction of like, well, you're being very demanding. Uh, and it's, it's just kind of interesting because it's like you have well over a thousand meals a year to eat whatever you want. And it's astounding that, you know, it's like as humans, like we can't even have one meal once a year that does not have some animal products or animal parts in it. Like that's, it's just like that difficult, you know, it's kind of an, it's, it's interesting. So really, I mean, it, it's up to you as far as your boundaries and how you want to negotiate it, but check out that video. If you are going to actually sit with them and you're wanting to kind of find a way to navigate that, then I would check out that video. Um, you can even just on my channel page or on my website, just put in holidays. You'll find it. Okay. So, um, Mick Tor says, Hi, Emily, in your time being vegan, what are the biggest changes for the, for the best you have seen or have happened? What difference are we making? Um, and he's from Sheffield, England. Thank you, Mick. So, so basically, I guess, like, what changes am I seeing for veganism? And, um, you know, I guess, I guess it's like, it's hard to say because I don't, I can't really see like, you know, what's happening everywhere. And, and I spend a lot of time in front of my computer. But uh, I do see an increased availability of vegan options. I see an increased awareness of veganism. And that's a good thing, you know. Uh, I think there is, there is change happening. Uh, however, I do say this with a caveat and with the fact that I, I by nature, tend to be a bit pessimistic. Just, that's just the, the way I've always been. So, and I don't think it's even pessimism necessarily. Sometimes it's just realism, but as much as it's good to celebrate this and it is good to see the victories that we're having and it's important to, to forge on, uh, it's also important to kind of be aware that even though in a lot of countries now the consumption of animal products is declining, in the countries that are producing the most people and that have the largest portion of the world's population, they are kicking up their animal product consumption. So worldwide, as a whole, it's going up. And I'm not saying that to be a big wet blanket or to be super negative, but just to be aware of the fact that we still have a very, very uphill battle to fight. And that doesn't mean that we should give up or that, well, we can't do everything, so we're not going to do anything. It's just to be, to be aware that it's, we need to keep, we need to keep working, you know, so, um, okay, so let me go through all of this. Hmm. Can't see people with care, that's why. Inner cities. Okay, so James, um, Sweatman, I'm hoping, I hope I'm saying your name right. I might, oh, I might mispronounce all of y'all's names. I'm just letting you know ahead of time. And I apologize if that's the case. Uh, but James says, um, I'm black and vegan. It seems hard to convince um, people with, and I think you're saying caveats on every corner. How can we help promote veganism in inner cities? Um, that's a very, very good question. And it's a very important, important uh, place to be, to be working on this. There actually are a number of number of programs in, in place and I'm I wish I had the names right now because I, I hope to do even more with this uh, there's there's a there's a, a number of programs I found even that are really fantastic and there's one in particular and I'm trying to remember his name right now it's DJ something I'm so sorry he he actually goes into the inner cities he's a musician he's an educator he's a gardener like 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 fantastic and he goes into these inner city schools with the kids and he works with them as far as like growing their own food, like getting like getting connected to where their food comes from. And this is like he goes into very um, 
you know, the, the inner cities, the very challenged areas, uh, there's, and, and, and works with them because that's where he's from as well. And I wish I, I will find his name and I will put it in the description of this video when I'm done. Um, but I've seen a number of things like that, like, um, urban rooftop garden programs, uh, you know, different initiatives where there's, you know, people who are just kind of like going into the schools and, and talking to the kids about it and, and being able to relate to them and be like, Hey, you know, this is why this is important. This is about our health. It's about our planet. It's about, you know, all of our, all of us. And it's about the animals as well, but, but bringing it in and in a way that's relatable, you know, and I think that's why it's also so important to make veganism as approachable and, and, and doable as possible for people. Because veganism can be the can be incredibly cheap, but you have to also be aware of the fact that there are areas that are food deserts. There's areas where it's virtually, if not completely, impossible at the time being to get fresh food. You know, and so bringing food into those areas is incredibly key as well. And there are there's um there's an initiative or a program. Yes, thank you. Someone put him D DJ Cavum. Thank you, Sentient Beast. Um, DJ Cavum is the is the guy I was thinking about. Fantastic. Look up look up his his uh, work. It's DG, DJ obviously, and then C A V E M. Fantastic. He's really inspirational. I hope to. I would love to interview him one day. He really blows my mind. So, anyways, things like that. Um, and then I have linked on a couple of my videos of like grow your own food and, and the, and a couple of others is like local harvest is, uh, in America. And then there's one also in Canada where they, they hook up local gardeners with food, um, pantries. So they will give their like surplus produce so that people who, you know, are coming to the food pantries can actually have some real food and not just like canned stuff and peanut butter. So initiatives like that are really important as well. Okay, that was very long. Sorry, guys. I know there's a lot of you. Um, okay. Um, so, hold on. Let me see. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to... There's still, there's a lot. And I'm trying to, to hope I can get to as many as I can. Mm, oh, that's a good one. Um, again, I don't know how to say these things. Mokanel Mokanel 109, would you ever consider speaking at a hospital to encourage doctors and dietitians to promote a more plant-based diet for patients? Love you, Emily. Love you too. Yay. That would be awesome. I would love to do that. A lot of it is right now, you know, it's, um, you know, trying to find opportunities and, and also, sorry, I got a chapstick up. Um, you know, f figuring out how to get into, into places. So, you know, I would love to speak in more universities. I would love to speak in schools. I would love to speak in hospitals, anywhere that I can get in. I'll go talk to people, you know, so I would love to do that anywhere, anytime. Um, at the, at the moment, you know, I can, I'm, I'm very limited by time always, but uh, with my speaking engagements and stuff, I usually, if I can even fit it in time-wise, um, the ones I've been able to go to so far is if I can get like a little bit of help with the travel portion, like the actual flight of it. Uh, and then I just get like a cheap Airbnb and find a food and everything's good. And I, I never want or ask for, for money to actually speak. So I would love to go into all those places. If I can, if I can hook it up, it's going to happen. Um, okay. Oh, thank you, Laura Morgan. Uh, Hannikins, am I coming to Scotland? Not right now. I would love to. Uh, the, the UK version, uh, ver the UK portion, the England portion of my trip was kind of, I already had the Dublin bookends and England was like, we're going to do this. And they just crammed me in and like shot me around the country and it was lovely, but I'd love to go all over and I love the different accents. Um, okay. Okay. So... Victoria Leopold, going raw in college is, is tough. How would you recommend going about this? Um, well, going raw, I guess, like, if you're actually going raw, that can, that can be challenging. And I guess it also depends on whether or not you're on, like, a food program at, at college. A lot of them have, you know, different stipends or, like, here's your food card and you get X, Y, or Z. Um, but I, what I found, at least where I went... 
uh, I went to two different undergrads is there's always like a like a salad barish type thing and there'd be like things of veggies and and some fruit and I just kind of load up on that as much as I could but it's kind of it is a bit limiting at times so you know I'd always I could you can also supplement from different grocery stores but if you only have the finances to use your card you know I guess you can do the best that you can um and and try to load up on everything that is free uh and I guess worst comes to worst you're just not raw if it comes down to it but you know, staying vegan in college, though, is, is, is definitely not as difficult by any means. There's, you know, a lot of different things that you can, you can eat, but, you know, I would just do the best as far as, like, loading up on all the free you can. If you can get some extra, you know, produce or something, that would be great. Maybe you can even do a work study or, or volun, you know, some co-ops. If you have a co-op in the area, sometimes they do, like, uh, membership things where you can work a little bit and, and get discounts, so. Okay, um, Let's see. Wow, there's a lot. Mm. Okay. Uh, am I from Germany? No, but I would. I love it there, though. It's fantastic. Love from England. Thank you, Rebecca. Madison, that's a lot of animals, and I love them. Thank you. Um... Okay, here's a good one. Uh, Candice, I'm going to say your, your last name wrong, Candice. Candice Doucette, maybe? Is it true that farm animals wouldn't exist if humans didn't keep them alive for slaughtering? As they are now, like as farm animals are now, absolutely they would not exist. So basically, the way that animals are right now, we've bred them to such an extent that they are these perverse genetic anomalies they're basically bred to suffer you know and they're bred to grow they're they're bred as products not individuals they're bred as products so we've optimized them we've optimized these machines these products that we've turned them into so pigs grow insanely fast the pigs and the chickens both grow very quickly so that we can slaughter them sooner so when they're babies they're about the size as they would be as an adult but it's because then we kill them so when these, you know, beings actually either escape or are liberated and get to live out a full life, they become so astoundingly large that it's actually detrimental to their health. You know, the pigs, there's a pig at Sasha Farm Animal Sanctuary, Wilbur, who's over a thousand pounds and, you know, can barely hold himself up. And uh, it's, it's because that's what we've done to them. So they, they would not exist like that were it not for us because nature wouldn't, that's not like nature would not select for that. Let's just say it that way. You know, um, it's not functional. It's not healthy. It's not sustainable for them as individuals. It's the same that we do with dogs and cats. Dogs especially, you know, we, we breed them to look a certain way and it's incredibly detrimental to their, their health and well-being. So, you know, if the whole world went vegan, we, we wouldn't be breeding them anymore, you know. And I, for one have no desire to well let's you know preserve this line of of cows that we've created you know there's no reason to do that it's just it's incredibly inherent with with abject suffering and misery you know so we definitely don't need you know to to, to keep the the farm animals around as they are you know, there was, a, of course, there's, you know, birds and chickens and, and cows and pigs well before we decided to make them the way they are today. But the wild ones are, can keep being what they are. And the ones who are here will take care of them while they're here. But we just need to stop making them. Same with cats and dogs. Stop it. They're, they do it on their own. We need to stop it. Okay, so... Mm, Oh, thank you, Jonathan um, Stainback. Then the reason you went vegan. Thank you so much. That means that means a lot to me. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, Antonio Burnley. If I could, could I come to your high school in Puerto Rico to give a speech? I, again, I would love to. Right now, it's finding you know time and finances are the the biggest um, hindrances. So right now, you know if 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 I can find a way to coordinate it, or if you're able to like you know talk to to the, the teachers or someone there and make and get it cleared. I actually was almost going to go to speak in a high school in the Midwest and 
at the last minute, the the advisor person like decided something on my channel didn't make him happy, so they had to to pull that. So you know, it'd be like kind of getting permission and all of that, and and um, and then seeing if I can either you know secure some funds or do fundraising to get out there. But I would, I mean, I would, you guys, I would come and speak everywhere all the time if I could, and I would make videos every single day if I could. You know, I'd like to have an entire kids channel and, you know, I have books I want to, to write and publish and, and, and there's so many things I want to do and I really hate being one person. <laughs> it's very frustrating for me, but I would love to come there if I can ever make it work. Um, okay, so, oh, sorry, there's, ugh, I'm going to get really close to the camera here. Um, Dev Druv? probably wrong. I apologize. Um, you know how free range eggs are not really free range, right? What if you are getting eggs from a farm that actually lets their hens run around? Well, I actually have a video. I have another video. I have a video called can vegans eat eggs from backyard chickens, which kind of speaks to that to a great extent because, you know, if you have your own chickens, obviously you can let them run around and, and do their thing. The problem is, there's a number of problems, and I, and I go into it, I think, in more depth in that video for sure, but number one, when you, when you purchase your chickens or wherever you get your chickens from, for the most part, they're coming from people who breed them for eggs, and so it's still supporting that, and regardless of where they reside, whether they're in a backyard or they're in, you know, a cage or anything, I talk about this in the Ireland speech, that uh, it's something that uh, the founder of Eden Farm Sanctuary, Eden Farmed Animal Sanctuary in, in Ireland, um, Sandra Higgins says their bodies are their prisons, basically, you know, and I say that in the in the speech, um, basically paraphrasing her conclusion, that it doesn't matter where they're housed, we've bred them such that they produce so many eggs so quickly all the time that it's just robbing their body of the nutrients and they are incredibly prone to fractures and osteoporosis. And so they can actually almost get hurt more sometimes when they have the ability to move around because they can get fractured more. So, I mean, whether or not that's the case, maybe they have a special chicken that isn't bred that way for some reason. Uh, I mean, if they're producing eggs to be eaten, then they're probably bred that way. It's the same. It still comes down to the fact that it's not ours. The chickens are not making the eggs for us. It's not, it's not why they're doing it. You know, they, they're making them for themselves. If they're fertilized, they're making them to have a baby. If they're unfertilized, it's part of their cycle, just like human females have a cycle, you know. So it, it just is going to happen regardless. And because they're losing the nutrients when they create these eggs, the chickens will actually eat their eggs and it's good for them. You know, it's not good for us. It's horrible for us. That's another point. Eggs are horrible for us uh, health-wise. Uh, ethics aside, astoundingly bad. If you go um, on my channel and look up The Great Egg Conspiracy, Lies, Corruption, and Kevin Bacon, it goes through all the way through it. But anyways, um, the, you know, they're not ours. They're, they're the chicken's eggs in the end. And, uh, it, you know, it's still uh, pulling all this nutrition out of their body that they need if you leave the egg for them or even a crack a, a chicken's egg, they'll all eat it. They love it. So just, it's not for us. Um, okay, so let me see. Mm. Natalie Landwehr, Landwehr, Landwehr. Sorry if that's wrong. I apologize. Um, how do I deal with being bullied at school for being vegan? Uh, number one, I'm so sorry that that's happening to you. You know, kids are... That's the way kids are, unfortunately. Um, you know, I think there's a number of approaches. And I think, if, uh, you know, some are probably going to feel better to you than others. And I know some kids will even kind of give uh, give some crap back to the kids, you know, if, if that's kind of more your style. I mean, not being, not like starting a fight or anything, but, um, you know, they... You know, if, I mean, if they're saying something silly, like, like, well, what about your protein or something, then 
you know, there's plenty of things you can say back to that that are very intelligent, <laughs> actually. So, I mean, sometimes you might feel like you want to match it. Um, other times, maybe it's, uh, you know, I even find that um, even in my comment section uh, where people are being really rude sometimes, like sometimes I'll even come back and just be like ridiculously nice and informative and it kind of freaks them out. So um, there's that as well. Uh, you can also like, if you feel like it, use an opportunity to to kind of teach them something if it seems like maybe they're even open to that. Of course, you, it really depends on the situation and the kid because some people are just going to be mean just to be mean and they, they don't really care you know, anything else, they're just being rude. So, um, you know, you can kind of maybe even like come up with a couple, like go to, go to replies, uh, to, to talk, to say back to them. Um, I do hope in my kids series, my interview kids series, we do talk about this and I hope to be airing that hopefully soon. I have so many videos I want to do, but if nothing else, you know, also find some people that you can, that can be supports for you. Even if it's not in real, in real life, you know, for some of us, the only vegans we know are online and, you know, kind of reaching out and connecting with other vegan kids. If you actually go on my vegan kids playlist and into the ones with the interviews, um, I have all of the links and the contacts for all of those, all of the kids who were on, who were in the interview series and, and a lot of them are very, very open. I think all of them are very open to, you know, hearing from anyone who's struggling. And so you can even reach out to them. And I'm sure they would be more than happy to, to be a support as well. Someone who's, you know, around your age and, and be able to give you kind of that, kind of that like friendship that, that's really important when, when we feel alone. But more than anything else, just know, please know that you are doing the right thing and that you're making a huge difference. And that is incredibly important. And it's, I mean, it's astounding, like, you know, what it does for the planet, for your, for your health, for the animals. And, you know, what the other people say, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter. I mean, I know it hurts and it sucks. And you have to kind of like be in, being in school for that aspect is really awful. But, you know, it's going to be one of those things that like, you know, eventually you're going to get out of school and, and it's like, they're, they're not even going to be there anymore. But everything that you've done for the animals and, and the planet is, is going to last forever. That's pretty amazing. So, um, okay. Sorry. There's so many things. Okay. Um, okay. Let me see. Mm, okay. Wow, there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, this is for you, Caleb. I hope that was helpful as well for you um, with the kids. Oh, also for being a kid in high school and vegan. Another thing, too, is a lot of times you'll find that you'll get like um, like a report to do or a book report or like a presentation or an assignment. There's so many times that you can take that assignment and you can do it about veganism and you can bring in that education. And it's like you have a captive audience. They have to sit there and listen to you. That's fantastic. <laughs> so that's always a cool opportunity too. Um, you know, can you, if you have like a, an Earth Day presentation, you have to talk about the environment, you know, bust out some stuff from Cowspiracy or from my Everything Wrong with Environmentalism in 11 Minutes or Less video. Just, you can always go into my blog post, you guys, on any of my videos. They have a post on my website. You can go on there. There's the citations. There's the in note. They're on footnotes. There's... Uh, you know, links to other scholarly things. So all of the research is there as well. So you'll have the information to back it up. Um, just so you know, I was very, I was like that weird kid. I was like the weird of the weird kid in school. It was very fun. <laughs> not very good high social skills. But, you know, it's not what's really important. Okay, um... Mm, okay. Lisa M. That's a really hard one. Um, I have lab experiments that involve hurting animals. Should I follow through or refuse doing the experiment? I don't know if you're in like medical school or, or, or what, um, what the situation is, but that's something that again, again, I have had on my, uh, my video topic schedule forever. And basically 
I mean, it's, it is, it can be really complicated when you're trying to go into a, a, a field, like even veterinary medicine, you know, you, you have to do some pretty awful things as well. I do know there have been people successfully, at least in America that I've read, who have been able to opt out of it. And I think, I, I mean, I think it's something that you should be able to, to do pretty effectively. It's just kind of finding the right, um, way that you have to go about it. But, you know, there's conscientious objection type of things. And there's, you know, other things where it's like people, they cannot force you to do something that's completely contradictory to your values. Again, depending on whatever country you're in, what the situation is, I don't know what, uh, the different, you know, schools or systems will do, but I think it's definitely valuable to, to object to it. I mean, it's never going to change if we don't. And honestly, these days there exist, uh, very effective, uh, simulation for, for different things. And, um, and that, that can be really helpful. So they even have like, you know, like automated autopsies that are completely, digital, you know, but like three, it's very, really cool what they have with the technology. So I would definitely object to it. It's also a, a way to be able to educate the, you know, your, your school, your institution, um, get online, look for examples of other people who have successfully done that. And, and you can find that template to follow. And hopefully one day I can get the video out on that. Cause it's very important. Um, okay. So my goodness, there's a lot um, oh, Sean V asking about the content in different languages again, just the, the bottom of the video descriptions, any of them go down there. There's a link. You'll find it. Maybe not this one yet. Cause it's a live one. I don't know what's down there. Probably scary things. Um, um, okay. Ooh, okay. There's a lot. Let's see. Um, Galissa. Oh my goodness, you guys, really? Um, Gallus, Ga Galisa Tsuki, however you say that. Thank you for that, that name. That's very confusing. Emily, are you going to make more History of Veganism videos? Yes! I'm only, what are we? We're only to the, uh, to the Renaissance, I think is as far as we've, we've gotten. It's, I've had to put a lot of the very intensive videos on the back burner while getting ready for speeches and travel and everything. Of course, then I do things like halal and kosher slaughter, which is was not a simple video. And the, the Italy bill one, the crime of raising vegan. I also do these ones where I think they're going to be simple. They're not. But the history of veganism ones are very labor intensive. I mean, really, really deep research in, in writing and everything. And basically each one of them is, is like producing like a, a 30 minute, like a full length television show. And when I was doing those, I was doing three videos a week as well. So it's, it, it leads to a lot of not sleeping, but I do hope to, I, I really want to get back to that. What I need, I am currently in the next like week I have to move and I have yet to <laughs> figure out where I am moving to. So when that's done too, then I'm hoping to finally try to get back on track with things. So sorry about that, you guys, but I definitely want to get back to the, the history of veganism series. It's, it's one of my very favorites. I love it. And I love doing, I mean, it's like, I do the really big ones. And I've been trying to also do some shorter ones. Like I pulled the, uh, the one of, um, now I can't even remember who, who I'm talking about. That's lovely. The artist guy. <laughs> Oh, my brain is broken. So I'm also like trying to, you know, do featured ones. Leonardo da Vinci. There we go. Good Lord. So I did a one where I pulled like the Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci part out of the longer beastly one and kind of focused on him more. And I plan on doing that as well with some other spotlight ones as well. So I'll keep doing the really big ones, but then also pull out key individuals and do, you know, shorter videos on them so that, because not most people on YouTube are going to be like 30 minutes. Nope. <laughs> so, um, so I do hope to keep you doing that, but the next one is the enlightenment should be the next beastly one. Okay. Um, Cecile, Cecile Akra, are you still in contact with Gary Yorofsky? Yes, I am. Him and, uh, Gary and his wife are very dear friends of mine. So I, um, I am still in contact with them. I need to check in send them the Ireland talk. It's very exciting. Um, they've been doing, 
Oh, there's like a, it's like a little fruit fly dude around here somewhere. Hello, little man. Oh, okay. Um, oh, wow. There's a lot happening here. Maddie Scola says, or Scala, what about people who claim to have health issues preventing them from being vegan? Yeah, that's a good one. People, you also have people say, I tried it and I died <laughs> or I almost died. I was just couldn't do it. So a lot of times it depends, number one, on what their issue is. And number two, very important, how, what did they eat? Because trying being vegan can mean a lot of things. You know, if you, if you kind of like in, in the, the crime of raising vegan kids video that I have about the, the Italy bill, you know, where they have these, these vegan kids that are hospitalized because they are just so, you know, near death. And it's like, well, veganism is just horrible and it's killing the children. And yeah, it's like we have, and you know, months later, it finally comes out. Oh yeah. Well, they were just, I think there was one, okay. They were just feeding them like apple juice and soy milk mixed together to an infant. That is not healthy, you know, and just because something's vegan doesn't mean it's healthy, you know, and I made the, the example, which I am regretting thoroughly in that video about the Oreos, because at one point, European Oreos were not vegan, American Oreos were vegan. Oreos has now relocated, apparently, to the UK. Their website still says none of them are vegan. It's very confusing, regardless. The example was supposed to be it's, uh, that even if you have, like, a food that's produced somewhere and it's vegan, produced elsewhere, it's not vegan, feed a kid just that and they're unhealthy, you know, it, it doesn't mean that just being vegan is unhealthy and, it, and it's also not a legitimate claim to say, well, because of this, not being vegan is unhealthy, you know, so it's like figuring out what exactly were you eating, you know, uh, and, and what, what kind of physical problem is happening right now. The blood type diet thing for is one I hear a lot. Like, well, my blood type, I can't be vegan. And there's just, there is just no medical foundation for that. I actually asked Dr. Gregor about that when I was talking to him during our last interview. Uh, and he was like, yeah, there's just, there's not, like, there's just nothing. So, you know, there might be some very rare genetic anomalies, you know, like that are like one in a bajillion or something, maybe that could have an issue. But a lot of times it's like, you know, if you, it's, it's figuring out like what your issue is, what you're eating. Maybe you also have like an allergy. Maybe you're gluten intolerant. Deal with that, you know, and, and, and it's not about veganism. There's, there's really no health issue that can be enhanced or improved as a whole, really, by eating animal products, really. I mean, like, you know, I mean, there, there's. There's going to be certain elements of, of animal products that might be beneficial in the short term or in some aspects, but, you know, it's still, it comes in a package deal. You know, you might get, you know, iron in this, but you're also getting all of the other crap in it as well. And there are plant versions. Of course, B12, vitamin D, be very careful about those. If you live in a very non-sunny place, regardless of whether you're vegan or not, you need to supplement vitamin D. Because it's from the sun for the most part. So you want to be careful about that. And then B12 is one where it's like, you know, it's not going to, it's not, you know, just it's, it's just safer to supplement it. They even, these days farmers are injecting their animals with B12. They put B12 in their feed. So a lot of times the only reason meat, well, always, the only reason your meat has B12 is because it was supplemented. So instead of taking a supplement, giving it to a cow, and then killing the cow and eating the cow to get that supplement, just just go buy a supplement and take it. It's a lot easier. It's a lot cheaper. It's a lot less gross. And it doesn't come with, like, saturated fat and all the other things that are going to kill you. Okay. So, my goodness, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, the Vegan Sass Queen asking about the concept of owning pets. I did talk about that in the Facebook one, and also I have a playlist called Pets and Veganism. One of my very first videos is about owning pets, and then the follow-up to that was about feeding pets. There's a lot more on that playlist, so I would just check that one out. You can find it on my playlist thing. You can also, on my channel, anyone's channel page, there's like a little, little magnifying glass, search pets, or go to my, or go to bitesizedvegan.com slash pets. You'll find them. 
Um, oh my goodness, there's a lot happening here. Mm. Okay, Marina, once again, the last name, Marina Gitano. So sorry. What is your advice to overcome social anxiety or public speaking anxiety? So that is a very good question. <laughs> Because I am a hot mess, if you guys don't notice. I mean, I, I don't, uh, I get a lot of uh, people anxiety for the most part. And I'm, I'm not like a, a social butterfly by nature. So one thing that I, you know, I, I just, in everything that I do, I, I try to kind of focus on like, what is it, why, what am I here to accomplish? And, and, and how can I be the most effective to accomplish that. So when I'm going and traveling and doing speeches and things and meeting people, it's because I want to educate and I want to get the, the message out there and I want to make a difference for the animals. I mean, for me, that's what it's about. It's for the animals, you know, and the, and the planet as well. Uh, so I try to stay, I try to stay focused on that and also think about, I mean, nothing that I'm going to experience, like the discomfort, the anxiety, whatever it might be, the stress, it doesn't even come close to, to what the animals are experiencing, you know, and that's, it's not, I'm not saying that to negate your experience. You don't, you don't want to, you know, also get into the habit of being like, what's wrong with me? I just need to suck it up because the animals have it much worse. So it's not about berating yourself or belittling yourself, but just, it's almost like pushing through. At the same time, I really need to learn, a, <laughs> I need to learn uh, to take care of myself better because I always tell people, you know, make sure that you put your own mask on before you help someone else, that whole analogy. So you also do need to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. But a lot of it is just starting, just trying. So when I started this channel, I had no idea what I was doing. And I was terrified because I'm very tech phobic and I'm a huge perfectionist. So it's I just kind of have to force myself to just do it anyway because otherwise I would never get anything out because I would want to be making it perfect and I want to prepare. So it's just trying and just knowing it's going to be scary, knowing you're probably going to make mistakes and, and just doing it anyway. And you're, you know what, you'll, you'll make it, you'll survive. You know, it's not, it's not comfortable, but, um, but for me, that's kind of the only way I could get going was just kind of jumping, jumping into it. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, bubbly vegan. I don't know if I could ever handle going to a slaughterhouse, but a huge part of me wants to make some hard videos. Do you think it would be worth it for me? Um, I, you know, yeah, I absolutely think it would. You know, I think you would have to be prepared as much as possible and also do your research on actually going. I don't know where you're planning on going and I don't know where you live, but at least in America, you have to kind of try to do your research ahead of time because of the laws that we have here and the fact that, you know, with the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act, you just want to be careful because you can just kind of be thrown away as a terrorist and then you're not very effective at all. So, so that's just on that side of things. But as far as like on the, the emotional, uh, psychological side for yourself, you know, I'm not going to say it's easy. It's not. It's heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking but it's so important you know because like I said earlier like the animals deserve to have their stories told and with the astounding energy that we take to deny it it it, it takes even more energy for us to expose the truth um you know one thing you could do is is go to a save vigil would be a way for you to kind of get a get a feel for it that way you're not literally inside the slaughterhouses, but you're, you'll be with the animals and you'll be at a slaughterhouse and you can kind of get your bearings. I mean, I would, I would encourage anyone, everyone to go to a save vigil. You can see, I have a whole playlist on, on my channel of, of slaughterhouse vigils, you know, with Toronto pig save and also now Manchester and Essex pig save as well. That's where I live streamed for the first time ever on a phone with a, a Wi-Fi phone following me. It was just, you know, it was crazy. But there's incredible value in going and seeing firsthand what's actually happening. Because even us vegans, we lose touch and we block things out. And we tell ourselves that I already know what it's like. So 
I don't need to, to ever see that again. But for me, it's very important to maintain that connection. Um, and it also will, it'll, it'll drive you. It'll drive you really hard to keep fighting. You know, if, if nothing else, it's gonna, it's gonna motivate the crap out of you. Just also be prepared emotionally and, and know that that night, maybe the next day or so, you, you might need to, to have some time. And if you can have someone who is supportive of you or who understands you ready or just, you know, let them know. And that way you can have someone there as well to help out with the stuff that comes up because it is, it's incredibly heartbreaking. Um, okay. Wow. There's a lot. Um, thank you, Galasatsuki. So sorry about your name. Okay. Thank you, Gabriella. That was very nice. Um, wow, there's a lot here. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Some, some of these are, are funny as well. Um, okay. Oh, wow. Thank goodness. All right. So Laura Gerard, Gerard, what careers would you suggest or degrees to take to lead to animal rights activism? The, you sound so much like me. So I, I'm very much a like, you know, structured person and I want to know the exact steps. And I wish life was not as messy as it is. Because that's what I used to look like. What do I, what degree do I need? And a lot of it, it depends kind of on what you want to be doing, number one. But also, for the most part, with activism, a lot of it is just kind of doing something, you know, and of course, if you want to do something on, if you like, if you decide, okay, I want to do, you know, work on the legal side of things and, and work with animal rights law, then obviously, yes, you're going to have to go through law school. So that's something you would need to, to lay out ahead of time. Also, if you want to do some sort of advocacy within any kind of particular profession, but as far as just activism as a whole, I don't really know if there's like a degree necessarily. I mean, if you, perhaps you want to do something that's very media based, you want to, you know, be able to navigate the media industry, then maybe you would want to take a, a course in that or a degree in, in that. Um, I think there is great value in that. I mean, that's one of my weakest points is knowing how to properly promote and, and distribute the content that I create. So I can create a lot of stuff. I create a lot of videos. I don't always know exactly how to promote them properly. I'm not a salesperson. I'm not good at marketing, networking. All of that stuff confuses me a lot. I wasn't even on social media until I started this. So I still don't understand Twitter. So kind of like a lot of it depends on what deciding what direction you want to go in. And then you can kind of reverse engineer. Okay, if this is where I want to go, what skills am I going to need to develop? But I would also encourage you and anyone to, yes, be prepared and, and look into that, but also just kind of do something. Because at least for me, like I said, like I got to, I will prepare forever. And I was actually in medical school when I uh, decided to, to do activism full time. So I had gone to, uh, to art graduate school. I'd gotten my master's and then my master's of fine arts, which is the terminal degree with studio art. And then I had started to, to go down the medical track because it was something I'd been always going back and forth between art and medicine. And I really just realized, you know, I was trying to, to do full-time classes and make a video every now and again. And I realized, you know, it's going to be like 10 more years of this and I'm not going to be able to do, have done, you know, really what I wanted to do. You know, for me, the medical, becoming a, a doctor was going to be just a way to I securely fund my activism because again, I have no business sense. I don't know how to sell things. So I was like, I don't know how, what else I would do. So I just kind of took a flying leap and you know, that doesn't always work for everyone. I, I had savings cause I worked full time, uh, starting when I was 14 and I worked since I was 12. And so I just kind of had always saved money. And so I just kind of burned through that starting bite size vegan. 
uh, until I was able to to actually launch a Patreon page. And thank goodness for my patrons. Any of you guys watching, I love you. Um, you know, it may have made it possible for me to keep doing this because I work more hours. I, I mean, I, I work over full time, so there's just no other way for me to sustain it. So, so again, it just kind of depends on where you want to go. Sorry, that was a very long answer. Sorry, there's so many of you guys. I tend to do that. Um, <laughs> so, all right. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a lot of watermelons. Thank you, Veggie Groot. Oh, we could go out for lunch. I'm going to be moving soon, dude. I don't even know where to. It's very scary. Um, climate change. That's very depressing. Yeah, we, we tipped the, we tipped the scales on the climate change, which is very sad. Um, it's not surprising. It's very frustrating because the organizations that are supposed to be doing something about it do not address the main cause. Um, okay. Vegan musician. Hi. Uh, could you tell us a little about your personal life, friends, family, relationships, etc., and perhaps a little from your bio? Yeah, I don't get I don't get a whole lot into my personal life on my channel. Um, I do have a, a a playlist that's I think less uh, visited. It doesn't really have I don't really know what it is, but every once in a while I do try to to do little like here's my life. Uh, basically, because my whole goal with this it, with bite size vegan, you know, it's about the education and it's about getting the information out and removing myself as much as possible from that when it comes down to the actual presentation of it because. I want to be able to give people the facts for them to evaluate and, and make the steps themselves. Cause no one's going to, you know, I mean, people might go vegan because, okay, this person convinced me, you know, but it's, it's even when people say that it's still something they've in their own mind, they have made those steps. They have worked their way to that conclusion. And, you know, a lot of time, I mean, if someone does go vegan for someone else, a lot, it might not last. I don't know. Some people do go vegan in a relationship just to make the other person happy. I don't know if that ever, Maybe it lasts. I don't know if that really is, sticks unless you make the, the connection yourself. So I'm always just trying to present, help people kind of make that themselves. Because honestly, as I've said many times, like deep down, everybody's already vegan. We already have those values, the vast majority of society. And it's just like giving people the information that they need to, to make those conclusions. Um, so for my personal life, though, yeah, I do have some things. Um, you know, I mean, friends and family, I... I am very much online all the time. I'm just on my computer all the time for the most part in a room. That's about it. Um, I'm not in a relationship. Uh, and from my bio, I mean, I've talked, yeah, I've talked sometimes. I did. I went to grad school for art, almost started medical school. I had a whole life before this, you know, and, and I still do have a life that doesn't have, you know, that's not like vegan. All, well, it kind of is vegan all the time now because of how much I work on this, but, um, but yeah, I do have other interests and, and things. And I've lived in lived and studied in India, you know, did work with uh, NGOs there on adverse sex ratio, um, looking into female infanticide and female feticide, all kinds of stuff, you know. So been all over. Okay. Um, okay, there's more here. Oh, that's very bizarre. Okay, um, sorry again about names. Um, Ochiki? I don't, oh, see, I don't know how you say it. I'm so sorry. My friend is interested in veganism, but she has the opinion that there's a gray area where you can eat the product but not support the process. My teacher also said the same thing. But yeah, isn't that bizarre? That doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, it's just not possible, you know, because, you know, like it or not right now, our... Our society runs on, you know, capitalism, supply and demand for the most part, at least here, most places. So these companies are not going to be making these products or breeding and slaughtering these animals if nobody is buying it. It's a very costly process, you know, and especially, which is another video that I want to do sometime, is if we take away the government subsidies, like the, the false lowering of animal product costs, it's even more expensive. So, you know, a lot of people say, okay, well, vegan food's expensive, but really like if, if you, if you, t if you take away the boosts that, that have been given to, to the animal products industry to be able to make this sustainable, it, it's, it's incredibly expensive. And so they're not going to be doing that in, unless they're getting money. It's just not, there's no reason to do that. So if there's no demand, 
they won't they won't keep doing it there's it's very costly no one's going to do that so anytime we do purchase animal products or animal byproducts it's directly funding that process because there's no other reason they would do it unless they're getting money so it absolutely does it absolutely does support it i mean there's really no way for it not to okay so Tiana Niklova says, where do I get vegan products if my local stores don't sell vegan alternative products? Okay, that's a good question. So, because not everyone has that in their area. And I do have a couple videos where I talk about this, I think, a bit tangentially, or it's on the, the blog posts at, at least. But um, one thing you can do, and this again, this depends on your finances and the availability and where you live for shipping. There's a lot of stuff online. A lot of times you can buy things online and have it shipped to you. But, you know, depending again on your country or, or what your finances are, it might not be feasible. So there's also a lot of ways to make your own. And I, I have a bunch of links to different recipes for those. Like on, I have a video about, you know, is cheese addictive? And I think even on my kids' videos about milk. I talk about, you know, I have links to how to make your own cheese, how to make your own milk, how to make your own plant milk. And you can also do the same, how to make your own fake meat, you know, make your own burgers, make, you know, all of these things. Um, vegan eggs, there's so many different ways to, to substitute eggs. I have a whole video, like, easy egg substitutes or something. So a lot of times that's actually a lot cheaper, is to just do it yourself. And if you can't find my stuff, you know, you can just even Google it, like, how do I make vegan cheese? And, and there's a lot of different ways to do it. So sometimes that is not only a more feasible option for some people, but a more affordable option as well. So I would look into that too. So there's a lot of ways to, to kind of like make your own. Um, okay. Wow, there's so many. Okay, ooh, hold on. Seems like a lot of people want this one comment and I'm trying to find it. I don't know where it is. Okay. All right, let's look down here. Hmm. Okay, so Mariana Barrientes, Bar Barrientes, I don't know why I keep trying to say it. Uh, as a vegan, should I be concerned about absorbing B12? I've heard your body can't absorb vitamin supplements that well. I do try to eat nutritional yeast when I can. It really depends on each person and, and what your body's been through and your health history. Uh, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. So take anything I say with a grain of salt. Please do that. Don't actually take the salt. Um... The safest way, I think, some of, really to kind of figure out if it's working is you can get your labs done. You know, of course, there are, there's different B12 tests. There's like, I think, a blood test. There's a urine test. And uh, and sometimes people even will say, well, maybe that's just showing what's in the blood system. But you can kind of test that. And also just how you're feeling. It takes quite some time to get into B12 deficit. Like, it has to be pretty prolonged before you feel the effects because of how long it stays in the system. And uh, sometimes you can also try maybe play around with uh, different forms of B12, different supplement kinds, maybe if you want to try a sublingual or something. But Dr. Greger has a lot of great stuff on B12. So I have a, you know, on my channel, on my nutrition series with him, we have a video on B12. But even if you just go to nutritionfacts.org and put in B12, he has a lot of different studies and stuff. And I think the majority of the studies are with cyanocobalamin. So that's what he recommends. But, you know, you can try those different things out. You can get your labs done and, uh, and even just, you know, seeing how you're feeling. So, um, okay. So there's another one. Hmm. Okay, Brian Cillian says, Emily, I know you focus on ethics. Have you found that non-vegans are more receptive to the moral argument, arguments for veganism versus the health benefits of a vegan lifestyle? 
I think, I don't know if I've really, I don't think I've ever really found like a blanket statement for people. You know, I think it, it so varies with the person. There's for, for some people, they could give a crap about ethics. For some people, they could give a crap about health. It, it really just varies by the person. And that's why the, I mean, it's another great thing about veganism. There's not really anything of someone's values that veganism won't make better. Unless they have some very disturbing values. So that's why it's also really great. I mean, if you're in a one-on-one discussion or, or interaction, like you can really tailor things. If you have a friend who is super into their health, like way into it, that's the person to come on the health front. You know, maybe you have a friend who's like all into Greenpeace and stuff. That would be the environmental thing. So I think it really varies with each person as far as what's going to connect with them and what's going to stick as well. And of course, you know, I do hear a lot of times people come in for the health and they stay for the ethics, but you know, I don't think it's, it's possible or even really desirable to, at least for me to, to say this is the thing, because there are also forms of activism that I've seen that I'm like, that is really not effective. I mean, this is what's in my head and I'm not going to like say this because I'm a person, I'm a human. And I sometimes think I know things that I do not. So I might think, I might think that in my head and then I like, you know, meet or see or whatever people who say this is what made me vegan so I mean and that's exactly why I say you know go and try these different things because different people reach different people and different tactics reach different people so um, there's value to so many of them okay so doesn't mean that you condone everything people black and white people out there settle down all right um and I think I I cannot remember, you guys, when I was doing all the research for this, either Facebook or YouTube cut you off at 90 minutes. And I, I thought it was Facebook, but I think I went over 90 minutes on Facebook. So it might be YouTube. So I will have to wrap it up at that point, just in case it's going to cut me off. All right. So, wow, there's a lot of stuff. Um, hmm. Yeah. Oh, Candace, I did pronounce it right. Yay. So she said the, the animals would survive if we didn't breed them because the wild animals of, well, if we didn't breed them, the, the remaining ones we could take care of. I mean, a lot of them, they still end up dying pretty earlier than they naturally would have because of just the issues with their, with their bodies and with how we've bred them, but we wouldn't be breeding them more. So they would, they'd be, we'd be done with the bizarre designer animals that we've created that are just prone to suffering. So, okay. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a very exciting part for you guys when I'm reading the comments. I was better at the Facebook reading comments because they pop up in this very exciting manner and they have things floating across the screen. It's very exciting. Oh, um, Bryce G is asking about instruments that aren't vegan. Another topic on my video list. There is, I think it's called the Incredibo. Don't quote me on that. Look up Incredibo maybe, but there's one, there is a bow, violin bow that's made that's vegan. And it's, I think it's called the Incredibo. I have the website somewhere. So they make it and it's, it's a completely vegan, uh, with glue and well, string, all of that. Cause I actually played the violin when I was younger. It's been a very long time. It's probably horrible by this point <laughs> if I ever tried to play it right now. Okay. Uh, ooh, okay. Mm. Okay, uh, Dev Droof, deer have been sex biased, hunted for years, increasing the population. If we stop hunting, how... Will the damage undo itself? Are there too many deer? There are just too many deer. Well, I mean, the hunting... Actually, I have a whole video on that. So um, look up on my channel, deer hunting. It's a deer hunting myth. And actually, the, the way that we... The hunting that we do actually ends up increasing the population. And it's even artificially increased so that the hunters can hunt. So it's, it's kind of a... It's one of those weird myths that we do that, like, well, we have to hunt them. Because they're all over. And they're all over because we do that so that we can hunt them. But if you look at the video, it, 
it actually explains it more clearly than that and, and, and more intensely. So that hopefully is helpful. Um, it's in the hunting myths playlist that I think I have only two in there because it's another one of my bajillion series that I need like a, a 10 of me to keep doing. Mm, okay. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, Andrea or yeah, Andrea or Andrea Odinger, what do you think of people who say they believe in consuming animals because it's a food chain and just don't believe in the torture that they go through in factories? So I think that's kind of, yeah, kind of along the lines of circle of life argument type of thing. And with that, I, you know, I mean, honestly, nothing that, nothing about the way that we eat animals has anything to do with the food chain or the circle of life or nature or any of that. It is astoundingly unnatural. And I mean, you don't, lions aren't out there, you know, breeding gazelles and putting them in racks and shipping their babies places and then sticking them in a crate and then doing the, you know, it's just, it's, there's just nothing about it that's anything near a food chain. And also, I mean, if you get into the physiological and the biological aspects of it, like the way that our bodies are, are put together, the enzymes that we secrete, the length of our intestines, the way our jaw work, all of these things, like nothing about us says, I'm going to go uh, attack a gazelle and, and rip through that. We don't really salivate when we see raw meat or a dead animal. I mean, there's a reason that people don't, like, go to slaughterhouses and just breathe it in, you know? <laughs> like, if we were, if that's really, like, our, you know, if we're top of the food chain, we're meant to eat all these animals, we would just, like, I mean, it would be like a bouquet of deliciousness in a slaughterhouse. You'd see congealed blood and you'd be like, that is dinner. Um, okay. So, and this, I think I gotta start wrapping it up because it's, we're getting close to the... The point, and I also got to make a video for Wednesday because I've been researching this, how to do this thing and not making a video. So I got to figure something out. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple more. Oh, I'm going to do at least one more. We'll see how long I answer it. And then I'm going to do this weird thing where I'm going to put a slide back up because I don't know when I stop this, if it's going to be a delay or if it's going to stop me mid-sentence for you guys. So I'll put up a slide so hopefully everybody will hear me say goodbye. That's so just no, that's that's gonna happen. Um, and okay, so let me woo, get that ready. Well, all right, so I'm trying to find at least another one to do. Let me find one that I can maybe not take a bajillion years to do here. Um, okay. It's funny because I have to lean forward and then it gets like, I get right in y'all's faces. So you're welcome. Okay, so, um, Doreen Will. Nope, Doreen, probably. I think Will is the first, <laughs> the first word of your question. Um, okay. So, Doreen asks, or Darren, I'm, I'm so sorry whatever. Anyway, sorry, limited time. Will you be on YouTube for the rest of your life or move on to other methods of activism? That is a good question. Um, I'm actually, you know, it's, it's hard because I'm actually in a kind of in a stage of right now of, of a lot of reevaluating because of, you know, I, you know, guys, I, I, I went down to one video a week for the most part. I'm still doing sometimes two at least, uh, but, you know, so that I would be able to get ready for the talks and everything. And with those, it's really, it's, I mean, it's, I work over full time just to keep the videos going. So then when you put in talks and, and travel, it gets crazy. And then the fact that I want to start an animal far, farm animal sanctuary in Iowa and uh, there's books I want to write. There's some documentaries I would love to put together. Uh, right now, I'm also trying for over a year now to, to get the time to put together an entire e-course and build an online academy for more in-depth uh, 
education training that people can do to get kind of deeper into not only going vegan, but then also aspects of activism, you know, help people kind of develop towards that. So there's a lot of things I want to do. There's so many things I would love to do with my activism. And it's just kind of trying to constantly evaluate and reevaluate, you know, what is the most effective use of my time? Where can I do the most good for, for the animals and reach the most people and be the most effective? And I don't know always, I never really know if what I'm doing is the thing that I should be doing. So I just keep trying. And there's, there's a lot of things I want to do. And right now, I mean, I got to move, I got to find a place to move. But I'm also just kind of in that weird shifting place of, you know, trying to revamp the website to make it more functional for people, trying to build a team, like bring on volunteers, but in a functional manner where I'm not in that bottleneck of like, the, the, you know, having to still, you know, instead of doing the things, I'm, I'm helping other people do the things. So there's going to be that upfront time of training people and figuring out how to do things and, and that kind of catch 22 of basically, you know, needing to bring on paid people, but not being able to pay people until I can do these other things that I can't do until I have people. So there's a lot of, it's a lot to negotiate and it's a lot that you guys don't see on, on the outside. Um, you know, and I'm also working to try to make it more, uh, clear to everyone on the outside about like, especially on my Patreon page, like try to make it more clear as far as like, you know, what are the needs of, of, of trying to like uh, continue doing this activism? Because it is, um, it's becoming a lot bigger than me. It has been bigger than me for some time. And, and I, and I don't want to be the limiting factor for the effectiveness. So I'm going to keep, um, evaluating, reevaluating. I'm going to keep trying things. I might mess up. I mess up a lot you know, and, and I appreciate all of you guys who, who stay here regardless and who, you know, kind of support me through it and also help get the content out there. That is so valuable. I cannot explain it to you how valuable it is. And if you, if you share this, share the videos, share the, the blog posts, you get them out to people, you know, cause that's why I do this. I just want this information to be out there. Cause we, I mean, the lies are very readily available to everybody you know, and they're not stopping and they're everywhere and they have a lot of money behind them. So the more that we can get the truth out there is incredibly important, you know, so anyone who wants to, especially, you know, translating the videos and the captions, if you go down to the descriptions, so helpful, anything. Anyways, that's all over the place. Um, I, I just, I do, I hope to keep doing, I want to do everything all at once all the time and I can't. So I, I don't really know uh, exactly where I'm going, but I, I'm just going to keep doing my best. So I think I'm going to have to wrap it up, you guys, because I don't want YouTube to cut me off at some weird point. And I just thank you all so much for being here, you know. Um, I just, I, I so appreciate it. And I want also before, I, it, it might cut me off anyway, I don't know. I want you all, all to know that with just the demands of everything, I am... I'm, I have thousands of emails in, in my inbox that I that I haven't gotten to and, and so many comments that I miss. And please know that even if I don't reply to you, it has, it, it's, it's, I want to, it's, I want, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And I, and I want all of you to know how much you mean to me and how much you're being here and, and watching and sharing and, and, you know, changing and learning and all. I mean, it just, I can't even, I can't even explain it, you know, and I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm not responding to you for any reason other than I just physically cannot produce more time for myself. So please just know that. And, and thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for staying open, you know, and helping others as well. So, um, all right. I think I'm going to sign off. I hope this was, was, was good for you guys. I really enjoyed it. It was a bit crazy and scary. But I, I think it went okay, hopefully. And I hope you guys got some some answers. So I'll, I'll get this package and put it up on the on the site as well so you guys can refer back to it later. So thank you so much and uh, stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe. I can say that for live now. Uh, subscribe for more stuff. <laughs> and, and I'll see you guys soon. All right, I'm going to do the, the fun little fade thing here.